So thank you for the introduction, Jennifer. And I will be talking about the eigenvalue estimates for major system reconstruction for DVAR. And this is joint work with Amos Lollis, Jennifer Scott, and Peter Yanomalu. So the main objective of this talk is to explore the sensitivity of the spectra of system matrices in reconstrained 4 dvar And to do this, we will look at the theory and how the extreme eigenvalues change when new observations are introduced. We have also formulated eigenvalue bounds, and there will be a numerical example that will illustrate the theory. So first of all, what is data simulation? So in data simulation, we're estimating the state of a dynamical system. And this is done by combining the observations of the system together with a prior estimate of the state, which is called the background. And usually the background comes from a run of a numerical model. And the errors of all the components are taken into account in data simulation. And then the estimate is called the analysis. And one of the applications of data simulation is the numerical weather prediction, where it is used to obtain the initial conditions for a weather model. And in this application, the state vector can have a billion variables and 10 millions of observations can be assimilated. So it is very important to have efficient methods to do the data simulation. And in this talk, we will look at the reconstrained 4 dvar method, which is a variational one. So we have a cost function. And here we're looking for the states over a period of time. And the analysis is given by the minimizer of this cost function. So we have penalties for the discrepancy between the state at the initial time and our prior estimate background. Also, we have observations of the dynamical system in the vector y, where i is the time. And this operator h maps the state variables to the observation space. So for example, in numerical weather prediction, we may have observations of the atmosphere radiance that come from satellites, but our numerical model may operate on different variables, such as temperature or pressure. So we need to map the model variables to the observations so that we can compare them. And finally, we have penalties for the model error. And all the terms in this function are weighted by the inverses of the error covariance matrices. So B for the background, R for the observation errors, and Q for the model errors. In operational applications, evaluating this cost function and its gradient is very expensive, mainly because we need to run the model. So some approximations are made. And one of the ways to approximate the solution is by using the incremental method. Here we use a bold notation for four dimensional vectors and matrices, meaning that they include the time dimension. So X here includes uh, all the states at all, at all the times that we want to know. So in the incremental method, we update the state by an increment delta X, and this delta X is a minimizer of a quadratic cost function. This quadratic cost function comes from the linearization of the nonlinear cost function that we saw in the previous slide. So here, the L includes the model linearized at different times. H includes the linearized observation operator. We have the mod information about the model errors in B, and we have information about the discrepancies uh, between the state and observation in D. And again, we wait by the error covariance matrices. And now we will concentrate on minimizing this quadratic cost function. And this can be done by solving large sparse linear systems. And we will look at three formulations of these. Two will be saddle point, and one will be a symmetric positive definite system. So first of all, we can look at the three by three block saddle point formulation. It was introduced by Fisher and Garol. And because of the size of these systems, they would be solved with iterative methods. And a huge uh, advantage of this uh, formulation is that uh, because of the structure of the system matrix, we can easily parallelize the matrix vector products. And uh, L includes the linearizations of the model at different times. And that makes the L and LT uh, blocks that are the most expensive to do matrix vector products with. So it is very important that we can do these computations with these blocks at the same time. And uh, despite the poten potential for parallel calculations, 
It is a very large system since we're solving not only for the increment delta x, but for two Lagrange multipliers lambda and mu. And the size of the system depends on the total number of observations denoted by p here. So because of these reasons, we propose that we can also explore a two by two block style point formulation. So the system is smaller by the total number of observations. And here we're solving for the increment delta x and just one Lagrange multiplier lambda. So this formulation has a smaller potential for parallel calculations because of these blocks with the linearized uh, observation operator and the inverse of the observation error covariance matrix. So this, uh, this matrix would, be, would not be formed explicitly. And so to compute the matrix uh, vector product, we would need some sequential computations with these matrices. However, notice that the most expensive calculations with the linearized model in L and its transpose can still be performed at the same time. And finally, we look at the standard formulation, which is the one by one block, and it has a symmetric positive definite matrix. And uh, the system is the smallest one of the three that we looked at. However, it also has the least potential for parallel calculations. As for the two by two block system, we see the block with the linearized uh, observation operator and the observation error covariance matrix. But also here to compute the matrix vector product, we need to compute the product with the linearized matrix, then apply the inverse of the, of the error covariance matrix. And only then can we do computations with the, with the, with the transpose of the linearized model. So, as I mentioned, these uh, systems will be solved with iterative methods, and Krilov solvers are usually the methods of choice. And it is known that uh, these uh, solvers, if need preconditioning for fast convergence, if we're solving for large systems, and there has been previous research on preconditioning the three by three block system. However, it gave disappointing results. And so we know that the rate of convergence of the Krilov subspace solvers for symmetric systems depends on the spectrum of the coefficient matrix, as well as on the right-hand side and the initial guess. But what we would call a nice spectrum is when we have eigenvalues clustered away from zero. And if we have eigenvalues that are close to zero and they're not very clustered, then the convergence may be poor. So hoping that some information on the, on the eigenvalues could be useful in constructing efficient preconditionings, we explore the sensitivities of the spectra. And we mainly look into how the spectra of the matrices change when new observations are introduced. So we have formulated theorems for every formulation. And so here for the three by three block system, our theorem says that the, the extreme, the negative extreme eigenvalues and the largest positive eigenvalues will either stay the same or move away from zero when you introduce new observations. And uh, so that could suggest improvement of convergence. However, the smallest positive eigenvalues will either stay unchanged or move towards zero when we increase when we increase number of observations. So that could impair the convergence. Then if we look at the two by two formulation, uh, our theorem holds when R is diagonal. So when we have uncorrelated observation errors. And the only difference in the result from the three by three block case is that now the largest positive eigenvalues will also either stay unchanged or move towards the origin. And finally, we look at the symmetric positive definite system. So we only have positive eigenvalues and the result holds for the diagonal R again. And in this case, the extreme positive eigenvalues will either stay unchanged or move from zero when we introduce new eigenvalues. Oh, sorry, when we introduce new observations. So we could expect improved convergence when we new observation. And we have also formulated bounds for the eigenvalues of the system matrices when the number of observations is fixed. And these eigenvalues depend on extreme eigenvalues of the observation operator and the bounds also depend on the extreme uh, singular values of the blocks with the 
linearized model and then linearized observation operator. So now if we look at the numerical example, we use the Lorentz 96 model, which is a common choice in data simulation experiments. We have 40, uh, 40 model variables, and then we, we consider 15 time points plus the initial one. And our observation error covariance matrix is uh, diagonal so that our theorems for the two by two block system and the symmetric positive definite system hold. Uh, so we consider six observation networks for every system, starting with just one observation in the beginning, and then we, well, in the case A, and then we increase the number of observations. And in case F, we consider a full observed system. And now if we look at the eigenvalues of the three by three block system, we see that the smallest possible eigenvalues as expected move uh, towards zero when we increase the number of observations and the other extreme eigenvalues move from zero again as expected. And so we also have black squares here that denote the bounds and we can see that the bounds are quite tight. And then we also solve the system with the three by three block matrix uh, for all the observation uh, networks. And in general, we can see that the more observations we have, the better the convergence with the one observation case is a bit different. And also the convergence is quite slow. So it's apparent that we need preconditioning. Now, if we look at the two by two block system, we consider the same observation networks. And again, we see that the extreme eigenvalues change as expected. So the positive eigenvalues move towards zero and the negative eigenvalues move away from zero. And here we have also have separate clusters of negative eigenvalues at around minus 100. And in each cluster, we have as many eigenvalues as we have observations. And then we solve the systems again with WinRES, with a two by two block system. And uh, the tendencies are similar as in the three by three case. So the more observations we have, the faster, the better the convergence. And the one observation case is always special. Mainly, we have formulated theorems on how the extreme eigenvalues of these uh, system matrices change when we introduce new observations. We have also determined bounds for the eigenvalues of these systems. And we have looked at a numerical example that confirmed our theoretical expectations, although the bounds for the symmetric positive definite system were quite pessimistic. And then also, our theoretical analysis claims that the shows that a small positive eigenvalues of the saddle point systems can cause convergence issues when new observations are added. And this is very important, at least in numerical weather prediction, as more and more observations from the satellites are used. So something should be done to take this into account. And because of these reasons, we also suggest that including the information on observations that uh, that come from the observation error covariance matrix R and the linearized observation operator H could be beneficial for preconditioning. So more details can be found in our paper. And there are some other references here. And uh, I would like to thank you for the attention and I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you very much, Yeva, and thank you for keeping beautifully to time. So has anybody got any questions? I'm not seeing any at the moment. 
I have one quick question. Have you any idea why the one observation case should be should be different? Now, it seems very unrealistic to have just one one observation. Yeah, you're you're right. It is quite unrealistic. So we're not entirely sure. It so it can be. It's probably not explained by the spectrum, but it may be also the right hand side, as we only have just one observation here. We haven't really checked that. But it's also not realistic, as you've said. So we're... Uh, we've got a couple of questions. Um, Hussam from Rutherford is saying, are there any constraints on the observations? Mm, is it in our work or... Uh, so I think, it, well, in the... To obtain the theorems, we we assume that we are adding new observations, so we're always keeping the same observations. And so the theoretical results should hold for any observations because we are looking at the well, we're looking when the when the observation operator is already linearized. In our numerical experiments, we had direct observations. So we just had um, we added some noise to our to our system variables, and that's how we obtained observations. But otherwise it should hold for any observations. Thank you. And a question from Andy Wathen in Oxford. What do the proofs of your eigenvalue movements involve? Mm, okay, so it's, it, may, it involves, I think, the, it, the interlacing theorem for the um, three by three case, we, the theorem holds for any R. So it's just mainly adding new rows and new columns when we add new observations and looking at how that changes the spectrum and then here we well we assume that the r is diagonal so we so we could separate this term nicely and that's the same in the one by one ball case yeah so more details are in the paper yeah absolutely final question um hussam asks again can you add artificial observations to improve the convergence mm, that's interesting so yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure how that would be. How? Yeah, I think that. Well, probably in the operational system, it would be a question how you generate the observations, and uh, then you need to also take into account. Yeah, it's well, it's a tricky question. You should also take into account their errors, and that, and you wouldn't want to. Um, well, add too many observations so that it's just becomes, well, the, the process becomes more expensive. And of course, in the operational setting, we have, uh, well, there may be some memory issues, I suppose. Mm 